Amen and amen. So, thanks, Patrick. Amen. You guys should have cheerleaders as well like Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. Um, turn to the person next to you and tell them, 2020, and please look lively when you do it as well. Don't look angry. Just smile. It's okay. God is good. He gave us another year. We should not, you know, want to kill ourselves. Oh, I have to pay bills again this year. Yes, we have to, but God made us live and breathe. But turn to the person next to you and tell them, 2020 is the year Christ, please listen to me. <laughs> listen to me. I'm not going to repeat myself. 2020 is the year Christ will be lifted up in my life. Turn to the person next to you. 2020 is the year Christ will be lifted up in my life. Now remember the faces of those who have said it and hold them accountable. <laughs> remember the faces and hold them. But like, hey, did Jesus, was Jesus lifted up in your life now? Was Jesus lifted up in your life? Um, so that's, this is the year that we're going to be intentional. Um, be intentional, be conscious, be aware, be alert that Christ will be lifted up in our lives. Amen? Amen. You guys sound so excited. Praise the Lord. Always starting a new year, always, when we start a new year, there's always like a new vision that we want, yeah? A new vision, a new goal. We set new priorities. Um, my, my, uh, my top list for all my New Year's resolution is always to lose weight. Um, always, that's number one. Never happens. It goes back down to the bottom, and then it comes back up to the top again. Um, but we always want to set a tone for the year, right? Because if you start off the year bad, you're just like, oh, this is going to be, you know, crap now, like it's not going to be worth it anymore, it sucks, you know, my year's already stuffed up, but we always want to start off a year on like a high note, on a bang, amen, and so the, the tone for this year, for this morning, and the message that um, I will be sharing about is inspired from John chapter 12, verse 32, okay, uh, John chapter 12, verse 32, now I can talk about last year, I can talk about as a church what we went through, I can give you my personal experience, you can give me your stories, and we can reminisce over coffee and tea and biscuits and, you know, all the food that gives us, gain, makes us gain weight. But I'm not going to talk about that. Last year was good. It had its trials, it had its tribulations, it had its challenges, but that's going to be left behind there. That is so last week. Okay? That is so last year. That is so last week that is forgotten. To, but not that I'm saying that we're going to forget the year. We still remember what the year brought us, but we use the past as a guide. We use the past as a, uh, like a, a, you know, like check. Like it's, it's an it's a experience. We check up on what we had not done in the past. We're going to do that this year. Things that we might have failed in, things that we might have lacked in, and how we need to improve on, that's how we set, set, look back and set the tone for this year. Amen? Both individually and corporately. So if you've been with us during our prayer gatherings, we, we were discussing about what we wanted to do this year differently with our relationship with God. Most people said devotion. They want to be more committed to God in their devotion. They want to be able to pray more at their homes. Um, and I'm sure some of us here are the same as well. But um, I'm really excited for 2020. Um, usually during New Year's, I'll give you um, my... During New Year's, uh, like in my past, I'm not going to give you my age. Um, I've accepted my age now. But um, in, my, in my past ages, every New Year's, I would, always, um, I would always get nervous. I would always be like, oh, my God, what do I have to do during New Year's? There's something that I have to do that has to be impactful and memorable. Like it has to be memorable because, you know, I'm not going to get it back. That year is going to end. I have to do something. But for some reason this year, uh, for the end of 2019, I was at peace. I was, I was really, really chill. Um, low message to go to the city. I was like, no, I'm too old for that. I want to sleep. I want to sleep straight after the fireworks go off. <laughs> That's my bedtime. Um, but I was somehow at peace because I was reflecting on what, um, on the year that God will have in store for us now. Um, and I had butterflies in my stomach thinking about it. And usually when I get butterflies, it's because when I'm trying to preach, one, oh, <laughs> oh, when I'm trying to go for an interview or something, you know, something uncertain, but something exciting, the possibilities. Um, and so that's what I had. I had butterflies, but I was thinking to myself, man, God is going to do something great for the church. Because why wouldn't he? Because why wouldn't he? 
And that's the excitement that, and, and even if it brings its challenges, I pray to God that it's new challenges. Like I pray to God that it's challenges that we can all overcome and go through together. Not the same ones, amen? Like we, we, we don't want same challenges. Like we want something new because, you know, we've been through the fire. We've been tested, Lord. Just bring it, you know, whatever's next, bring it. But I'm excited for the vision of what God is going to do for the church. Are you excited with me? Amen. 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 So this morning's message is entitled, All Eyes on Him. 2020 vision. All Eyes on Him. So um, it's a Tupac song. <laughs> if you know, no, it's not. All Eyes on Him. So the verse, the verse for this morning is found in John chapter 12, verse 32, if you've heard me earlier. And I'll read that. There's uh, two translations that I put up there. The first one is, in NIV, it says, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. In the New American Standard Version or Bible, it says, and, if, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. And if I, I is Jesus Christ, he's referring to himself, okay? So a bit of context about, that, about the verse. So this was said, spoken by Jesus, when he already triumphantly entered Jerusalem on a donkey, it was a couple of days before his crucif crucifixion. I was actually struggling with that word. I kept on, say, I kept on saying crucifixion. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a bit conscious when I'm saying that word now. Um, crucifixion. Okay, I've stumbled myself now. Crucifixion. You'll know what I mean, okay? Please, you know what I mean. So it was a couple of days before he, um, he got crucified and he predicted his death. He already predicted his death. He knew how he was gonna die on a cross. Because at that time, the, the punishment, the corporal punishment, and it was in the Roman Empire, the, the Romans, what they did, we all know the story, they hanged people on a cross. It was the most, at that time, it was the most humiliating way to die. It was the most degrading way to die and the most torturous and the most punishable, like you know, the pain that you'd go through to hang on the cross, it was, it was extreme. But he knew the way he was gonna die. And that's why when he said, when I am lifted up. But that verse, and this is what I, when I was researching this, I was blown away. Like every time you research the word to study, God, um, Pastor Nis said this before, and I always keep this in mind. It says that the Bible is sh so shallow that a baby or a toddler can swim in it, but it's so deep that an adult can drown in it. Have you heard that say, have you heard that before? He, he's said that a couple of times, but it's so true. Like this verse, right? And if I am lifted up from the earth with all men to myself, Christ could have said, when I am crucified or when I am hanged on the cross, I'll draw all men to me. Because that's what happened. He could have used those words, when I am hanged on the cross, because that's what happened. He could have said, when I am nailed, when I am brought up on the cross, then I'll draw all men to me. He could have said those words, but no, God, Jesus is so sovereign. Jesus is so, his, his wisdom is unimaginable because the words he used was lifted up. Now, when you're interpreting scripture, hermeneutics, you need to go back to the root words. Um, lifted up is a verb word in Greek, and it has actually two meanings. When I am lifted up, it actually has two meanings. The first meaning was the literal lifting up of the cross, being seen, because people were looking up to the cross. You, can, you look up, you don't look down at the cross, you look up at the cross. You were being lifted up. It had that literal meaning, but it also had another meaning to it which was Christ being exalted. Christ being exalted. Can I get an amen? amen? Not exalted because he was high, but exalted because if you read the previous verses, it said that when Christ was gonna die, he was gonna take control and chase away the ruler of the world, which is Satan. Because Satan, Satan was, is the prince of this world. He was the ruler of this world. But when Christ went to the cross, that meant that, that, meant that it was defeated. The power of sin, the power of death, of Satan, of his dominion, of his rule was over. Christ exalted above that. He was not physically resurrected, uh, physically risen on the cross, but he was also literally exalted above all dominion, of all reign. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He is God. He is who we worship. 
That was his author. That was like a highest honor that was given to him. That, that's what the two words mean lifted up in Greek. Amen? Amen. So it's not just when I am lifted up like, yeah, I heard that before. No, it's actually there's so much power to it. When I'm lifted up, yes, we see Christ on the cross. We see the work that he has done on the cross, the salvation of all mankind on the cross. But we also see on the cross was that the defeat of the enemy, that Christ is exalted above everything now. That's why when I am lifted up, I will draw all men to me. And that should be a motto that we actually in place in our lives in 2020. Last year, maybe I'm going ahead of myself. Can you see how God's, Jesus Christ is so, his, his wisdom, the words he uses, so that it does not just take place there, but it, it's everlasting. His word is timeless. What applies then applies now and forevermore. This year, let's make Resoul Church the banner year, a banner year of Resoul Church, that the name of Jesus Christ will be lifted up and that he will draw all men to him. This year, we will see numerical growth in our church. Amen? Amen? Do we want to see other people in our church? I want to. I want to see other people in our church. But I, want to see, but I want you and me to be used by God to bring those people in so that we are active participants of God's kingdom. Not just a few of us, not just some of us, but all of us. And in order for us to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, we need to fully understand and grasp the magnitude of what the cross represents. I repeat, in order for us to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, we need to fully understand and grasp the magnitude of what the cross represents. I say this because if we are to sell a product, if we are to sell, you know, the kitchen branding stuff that people do or the makeup, Revlon stuff people do, you need to know your product. You need to believe in your product before you, before you tell people about it. You, have, you need to experience it already to yourself and say, yeah, if I've experienced this firsthand, this is good. This is 100% leather. It'll never fade. It'll never, I don't know what leathers do. They don't break. They don't tear. Yeah, they don't, they, are they lasting? I'm not sure. I don't, <laughs> I don't think I need to have leather. But you believe in the product and the quality of what you're going to be selling, right? Um, before my previous job, I was a sales, I was a sales agent. I was, a, I was in marketing. And um, the, I remember my first shift that I had, yeah? Uh, we had to sell a product and we had a script. And so when you're learning a script and you're trying to make a phone call to a random person over the yes, I was one of those people. Um, <laughs> when, you're, when you're trying to make a call over the phone to the people, your voice, your voice is shaky. You, you read the product and you're like, yep, it's 100%, but I can give you 30% discount, which will make it $70, yep. But don't worry, it'll save you money. Like you're trying to pitch because you're trying to get a sale. You're trying to increase your KPIs. I remember when I started the job, I was so nervous. I think I made the customer nervous as well over the phone. It was not face to face. She was nervous. I was nervous. We both were nervous. I just hung up the call. Bye bye. Next, the next caller came in. Um, I did the same thing. I, I ended up coming to the middle part in the pitching part to pitch my pitch the product, and then I got I got scared again because I did not understand my product fully. So I was like, hey, I'll pass it on to my supervisor. He'll he, he'll explain more. So I gave it to my supervisor, who then was able to close the sale. And so, but over time, I became a pro. I was actually really good at my job. <laughs> I'm not bragging, but I was actually I was I I became to believe I came to believe in the product that I was actually giving, because over time I had seen all the products and I was able to then recognize which product suited which customer, which offer I would do, which discounts I would give, and then I would retain the customer or sign up a customer. Because I believed in the brand that I was selling, that I was actually say, giving people discounts. Yeah, um, especially my older customers, I would always, I think I gave them free, did not even pay for their bills, like $30 phone line, I got it, it's covered.